Hi everybody and welcome back. Today's topic in general is going to be gratitude. When I was a younger person, um, gratitude was an area of my life that uh, really went unnoticed to me. Um, I grew up in an entitled environment. My, my family weren't uh, millionaires or anything like that, but I did grow up in by uh, what would be classified uh, by any standards anywhere in the world as a wealthy community. Uh, it's a small community outside of Boston, maybe 20,000 people, and a lot of the citizens there are CEOs and doctors and lawyers, and uh, it's mostly Caucasian people, uh, Asian people. The level of other cultural diversity uh, is very low, um, and it's sort of a cloistered little bubble where, you know, the quote-unquote real world uh, doesn't penetrate. So the first part of my life, I'd say maybe up until about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, so a, a big part of my life, actually, I shouldn't say the first part, a big part of my life, I was um, not grateful for the things that came into my life unless I felt like they were something uh, enormous or important or that got me paid attention to or that got me money or that got me status or that got me some kind of power. I thought those were the only kinds of things that were worthy of being grateful for. And soon after I met my wife in about 2007, she showed me that Small things are what we should really be grateful for. The small things are, uh, in fact, what I've come to learn uh, as the most important things uh, to be grateful for. And I smile as I say it because when I first met her, um, I didn't understand the point of her lessons to me. I didn't understand what she was trying to show me. Uh, my wife, who is now um, a professional at a major university, grew up in uh, very modest, humble beginnings. Uh, her family is very hardworking, and um, when I saw their first apartment in Spain, you know, the countertop had cracks in it, and the refrigerator and the sink were very old. And I asked her, I said, when I first saw it, they weren't living there, nobody was. She just wanted to show it to me. I said, Honey, is this everything? Is this the way it was? And she said, yes. And a part of me got very sad for her uh, because um, the conditions were very, very, very modest. And um, it was hard for me to look at coming from the background that I came from. And what was hard about it was that it made me think a lot of things at the same time. It made me think about how in my own life, you know, I always needed all this comfort and pleasure just to get by and I needed everything to be perfect and if it wasn't, I would cry and moan and whine and oh God, why me, 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 me. Have you ever felt that way? We all have at some point or another. And I looked at my wife at that moment and who she was. At the time, she was a PhD student at Vanderbilt University, finishing up a PhD in a very complicated subject. Um, and I thought about where she was and where she has uh, arrived in life. And it's just the most humbling thing in the world uh, to see who she was to where she's come. And if you ever met my wife, you would know her demeanor. The woman does not complain. I don't know what to say. She, she does not complain. She just takes everything as it comes one step at a time. And something that I've learned from her, from being her husband, from being around her, sharing the same space as her for almost 10 years, is that um, her attitude comes from a sense of gratitude. Sometimes I wish those two words didn't rhyme. It sounds so lame. Attitude of gratitude. But that's what it is. You know, or you want to call it a disposition. Her disposition 
her mood of gratitude. Uh, did it again. <laughs> um, they, uh, she's shown me that gratitude is congruent with a um, happy and healthy life. In fact, it's the tiny things that we want to think about that we should be grateful for first. Uh, for example, I have, let me see, I can give you an example right in front of me. Ah, here we go. This. This is Stonewall Kitchen Basil Pesto. I have never had Stonewall Kitchen Basil Pesto in my life. I don't know what it tastes like. I'm sure it's pretty good. Wait a sec. Here we go. Let's do a little thing here. I got all the oil because I didn't shake it. So, but under the oil, it tastes like it'll be okay. I'm grateful <clears throat> for the basil pesto. Why? Because that was a gift from my mother who knows my wife wasn't feeling well the other day. And so she just went out of her way to buy this. And the me from 10 years ago would have scoffed at this like, basil pesto. What a pedestrian gift. Hmm. What a gift of the common people. Hmm. That was my attitude 10 years ago towards stuff like that. And obviously a very cartoonish exaggeration, but that was kind of the thought in my head. Uh, if, if, if I saw something modest or small or, um, you know, of that, of that nature, um, and I, I, I screwed up. I, I screwed up. I messed up having that attitude of negativity towards small things that were given to me. I wouldn't acknowledge them. It always had to be bigger. It always had to be bigger, 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 bigger. Whatever it was, whether it was... Uh, a project that was going to bring in big money or a big title for me or um, go to some exotic travel destination or have the best pictures to show people. I, um, I became that guy. Sorry, I keep sniffing. I'm having allergies right now. Um, I became that guy. I became the guy that my younger self promised myself that I would never become. You know, and that guy, pardon me, is a total a-hole. Really is. Like, people who behave like that. I was one of those people. I'm not one of those people anymore. Am I capable of being an a-hole? Sure, we all are. But in general, I have, I have changed that around. I've transformed that circumstance in myself. And the reason, the way I've done that is, this is terrible, is to take my wife's suggestions and to implement them, which is to be grateful for the tiniest things that that we have um you know i look around my life now and i'm in i'm in my kitchen i'll give you like a quick little view there's like a shelf where we keep some spices and stuff and that picture up there that you see right above my finger that's uh my brother ryan created that he's a graphic artist um, you know, that's something I'm grateful for, having a brother who's so talented, who gave me for free that file so I could turn it into a poster. You know, we have a stove over here, our countertop, little view out the window. There's the washing machine in the corner and some other stuff. You can see refrigerator in the background. All of these things took us a very long time to acquire and to build up. And you saw my house. It's modest. We are, we are not millionaires. This is a little tiny house. Uh, from 1910. It's a farmhouse. Um, and I'm so grateful for all of it. All the things that you just saw. I'm grateful for it. Not because it's stuff. I'm not like, oh, I have stuff. This is great. That is, too. But that's not the main reason. The main reason is the story has resolved itself. My wife and I have worked so hard and struggled so hard to get here. Uh, I was a scholarship kid. She was on scholarship too. We had to put a lot together. There was a time, like I said, when I was making nine bucks an hour at Sam's Club and she was only making like 19,000 a year as a graduate student, you know, despite what they show you on TV, right? The glamorous life of a PhD student. 
you just work your butt off as a PhD student if you do it right, and you don't get uh, a lot of money for the value that you add to the university, all your work, you really don't. You get paid well afterwards, you know, once you make it to the big leagues, but that's, you have to make it to the big leagues. Very competitive. So we've made it to this point, and perhaps the biggest lesson I've taken away from it that I want to give to you today is to start with gratitude for the small things, and it's very simple. I'll show you how to do it. This is how I did it. This is what helped adjust my crappy attitude towards gratitude. You know, if you have a crappy attitude towards gratitude, if you're not feeling uh, warm and, and complete and whole and, and well when it comes to what you have and who you are, like I wasn't, I was very, very feeling awful about that and it was me putting it all on me. What I learned how to do is this. You say out loud what you're grateful for. I'll give you an example. It's, it's, here it comes. You look at your little garlic holder thing, okay? And now this has many layers. Watch the gratitude. You say, I'm so grateful for this garlic holder. It holds my garlic and keeps it safe. And then you can open up the garlic holder and you can say, I'm grateful for the garlic inside because what this represents to me is that I have the money to be able to go to the grocery store to buy something extra like garlic, and I can keep it in this little holder. And you can go even deeper. You can say, I'm grateful to the scientists who created the plastic to make the garlic holder. And you can go even deeper and say, I'm grateful for the designer who conceived this little neat design that contains the garlic and keeps it, and keeps it safe. And so that's just an example. There are many, many ways when you start to look at the littlest things around you, the littlest, tiniest things, you'll find a ton of gratitude for them. I'll give you another example from a little thing. See this? This is a uh, just a tube of lanocaine. For those of you who aren't from the United States, this is an anti-itch cream. I, I kind of have like a little thing on my arm. I don't know if you can see it. It's like right there. It's kind of red. And I'm grateful to the lanocaine because... <laughs> It doesn't smell bad. I, they, this stuff used to smell like crap. It used to smell like medicine, like a hospital. And they changed it. And I put it on the other day. I was expecting the, the uh, lanocaine. And I went, I went like, watch what... It smells great. It smells kind of like... Uh, what does it smell like? It smells like uh, floral, kind of a little flowery. Um, so, yeah, I bet you didn't think you were going to watch a, uh, you know, almost 40-year-old ball guy sniff some lanocaine today. But there you go. You can be grateful for that. Be grateful for that. What the gratitude brings, you guys, is happiness. Um, I've become a happy person. I've become a satisfied person. I didn't think satisfaction was a um, possibility for me for a long time. I thought that I was always going to be striving and always going to be pushing and always going to be driving and always going to be digging down into me for the next thing that was going to satisfy me or that was going to... Uh, propel me forward, I should say, that was going to bring me to new heights. Mm, my God, how wrong I was. And listen, this isn't to say that you can't become governor of your state or president or the CEO of a huge company or a millionaire. Um, you know, it, no, there's, the sky's the limit. It's what you want to make out of life. It took me forever to realize that I didn't want to be those things that I wanted to have this little simple life that you see, a little farmhouse and a wonderful wife and a business I run from my computer and the freedom to make this video at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon when you know people are still working in offices and about to endure a hellish hour to two hour long commute after a long work day. That's my pleasure and satisfaction and what enabled me to go after it for real, finally, after years of searching, was the gratitude. The gratitude for the simplest things. So I'm going to wrap the video up now, and I'll give you a, one more example uh, of how to um, bring gratitude into your life. And let's see if I have another object. I got one. I'll be right back. Let's see if I have another object around here. All right. Ah! Ugh, flashlight. Scary stories. Flashlight. So, I'm grateful for this flashlight. You know why? Because it costs $4.97. These suckers used to cost like 30 bucks. the yellow ones with the rubber rim. Uh, it came with two batteries included. Grateful for that. Save me buying batteries. 
as you can see, the uh, light is really bright. And so that makes me grateful because uh, I know um, I can um, help keep my family safe if I have to find something in the dark or if I have to explore uh, something outside at night. You know, God forbid anyone come creeping around here doing something they shouldn't be doing. Um, this flashlight enables me to do that. And um, it's also just cool to look at. I like the color. I like how bright it is. And I think the handle is really convenient. You can do all kinds of neat things with it. You might be listening to me say this and go, what is the matter with this guy? But I'm telling you, this is the secret. It, you have to start being grateful for those, the tiniest things. Like, like look at these ridges right here. Look at them. Woo, aren't they great? You can grip them, make sure you hold the flashlight well. Um, what seeing these tiny things does to us is it keeps us in the present moment. That's what the gratitude actually does. It keeps you out of the future out of the past. You, you start to forget your regrets. You start to heal your regrets. You start to let go of anxiety for the future. You, you start to forget about all these things. And you're just right here with your flashlight. The beautiful bright yellow flashlight that flickers on and off and has a cool rim around it and came with two batteries. And in case you're wondering, this is an ever-ready flashlight. You can get them at Home Depot. Um, you know, in the United States, that is Home Depot, and I highly recommend. I was going to buy, like, three, but my wife was like, uh, no, we only need one. And I was like, meh. So, that's, that's the little chat on gratitude today, guys. Uh, again, I hope it was useful to you. In the comment section below, please leave your comments, questions, concerns, suggestions. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys, and I'd like to thank you all again um, our video uh, watches are starting to pick up. We have more than 100 watches on some videos, more than 200 on a couple. And that's really encouraging to Nas and I as this project moves forward. So thank you uh, for all those who are watching. Keep watching. We're going to come try to come up with great new material for you uh, that you can take away for yourself and your life and um, create whatever kind of changes that you want to see in your own life. So from Boston, cold rainy day. Hope it's sunny where you are. Thanks so much. Peace.